I recently got an email through asking if I fancy doing a bit of a collaboration with another YouTube personality. Now it turns out this fella's been on TV a couple of times on different TV shows and he's got his own YouTube channel where he's the star of the show and he's a plumber. Now whenever he does plastering he always gets loads of stick in the comments so he's come up to me to learn a few different tips and techniques to improve his plastering a little bit. I'm Kirk Jossfield. I'm Roger Pispeet. And you're watching On The Trowel. You're watching On The Trowel. Today we're going to be plastering a couple of walls in this garden room with a special guest. Hello I'm Roger Pispeet from the Skill Builder channel and we've come to meet Kirk. He's got his own great channel called On The Trowel which I watch all the time. I really love it and uh, he very kindly saw my plastering and went mm, you could use a bit of help there Rog and uh, he's going to give me a few tips on how I can improve my plastering. So today the plan is we're going to go through a few skimming techniques and see if we can't bring Roger's plastering on a little bit. So Roger's field of expertise is plumbing so whilst he's here I've got my bathroom on the go at the same time so I'm going to be picking Roger's brains on plumbing things and no doubt Roger's going to be picking my brains on all things plastering. Thing is, I'm not a plasterer, as a lot of plasterers will point out. Stick to plumbing, you idiot, they tell me. And worse than that, they're quite bitchy, really, a lot of them. But the thing about Kirk and a couple of others, like Blaine, is that they did give me some encouragement. They said, good luck to you, mate. You could do it, you just need a few basic instructions to get you better. And uh, that's what I'm here for. So we didn't board this, by the way. The customers boarded this for us. It was a fairly nice job. It's We've right. just turned up to do the skimming. Yeah, the, the easy bit, the lovely easy bit for us. Now I'll tell you something interesting. I'm 37 and I feel like I've been on the tools my whole life. Now when Roger was 37, I was three years old. That's right, I'm sure he won't mind me telling you this, but basically, Roger's had a full working career before I was even born. I've got something to wind Kirk up as well in a minute. Right, for me, this is quite interesting really because Roger's been around, Roger's been in the trade, working away since probably I was in nappies. So, I've got to sort of try and teach him, but I don't want to, how to explain it? I don't want to come across as patronising to him really, because, you know, he's been doing, he's been doing building work since I was like knee high to a grasshopper. You think it's not all going to fit in the bucket when you see it like this, because there's more in the bag, but it slowly starts to absorb into the water and it does all go in. Some fellows will say, keep her, um, you know, some dirty water in a in a an old PVA tub in the van, mm. and when you're doing little jobs, you can just use the dirty water to mix up. Yeah, yeah. That's fine, but it's unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it'll go off like that, and sometimes it'll go off just yeah. a little bit faster. If you want to accelerate it, I always just use half time because then you know exactly where you're up to with it. You know, it's not going to take you by other, surprise. The other thing is, if you've got a bag that's a bit old, sometimes it goes off faster. Sometimes it hardly goes off at all. Yeah. And you can't even, <laughs> Look at the drawer, yeah, yeah. yeah. So work? I've had stuff that's out of date. Yeah. You put it on the wall, and four or five hours later, it's still yeah. wet and, to the and touch. And other times, it's gone off like <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The magic of plastering. Yeah. <laughs> we don't work to the whistle, we work to the thistle. <laughs> when it's set, we're gone. First things first, let's, let's wet, the, wet our tools off first. Your wife won't be watching this. <laughs> no, my, your wife my missus doesn't watch YouTube. No, you know what? Like, my wife doesn't watch Skill Builder. <laughs> She's only taken an interest in it since um, she found out that Dylan's wife watches it. <laughs> well, I'm not being outdone. I had, to, I had to ban my missus. She was watching the videos. And she was like the biggest troll in the comments. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's lying, he doesn't do that. <laughs> he goes to the pub when he finishes work and all yeah. sorts. I was like, oh I no, like I had to block her. <laughs> I like your line, you said, if I'm not in the pub by five o'clock, they send out a search and Yeah, it's, it's true, it's true. <laughs> right, so once we've wet our tools down, is that? Yeah, I'd give that, a, give that a wash off there. Give it a scrape wash. off. You, or just, just wash it with the water and all that, uh, those little crumbs will just come off then, just so they're not in your mix, mate. That's it, yeah. Now, what we want to do is try and get as much surface water off the tools as possible because the stuff will slide off. Yeah. So, I've heard that a few times. Plop. Take, take a little bit of gear and just spread it around the board a little bit. 
once once there's plastic been all over the board the next load of it won't slide as easy then it'll it sort of stays put like so you don't need to see me oh <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean? oh, oh, oh no do you want us to go <laughs> Hey, no, no, this is good, this is good, isn't it? This is real life, it's what happens. <laughs> That's it. Amazing. Right, so then I can, hopefully. As a general rule of thumb, if you're right-handed and we're skimming, we want to start on the top left-hand side and work to the top right and then bottom left to bottom right. So, ideally we'd start on the top corner up here but trying to just straight away fire material like that up there, it'll probably spill off. So this is what I'd recommend we do. Just take a bit of a trial's worth. Dylan, can you edit that out? Straight away. <laughs> yeah. Take a bit of a trial's worth like that. And then yeah. once we've got a bit of gear on the wall, we can take a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah. And start. Wow. So if you, if you, see, just like, and then, yeah, that's sufficient. Now I've got these little speaker things to get round here, so that makes it a bit more interesting for me. But... Yeah, so you're not then putting plaster on the ceiling before you're ready, yeah. or if you've got a decorated wall. Supposing you were doing a ceiling and not the wall, yeah, not going right to the edge. Yeah, you don't want all the mess all over the wall. So my, yeah. my little, well, I, I actually say this quite a lot on my videos, people have heard me say it loads of times. Yeah. I put the gear on like yeah. that, and then yeah. take a little bit and go in neat. Yeah, yeah. Take it's a little just, bit and go in using neat. using the wall as a spot board, aren't you, really? That, that's, yeah, like that. Yeah. And then. Got it. Very now look, I just want to ask you, because I'm one of these people, right, I need to know why, I always need to know why, right, so I'm right handed and you're saying start from the left hand, why? Okay, so, if I'm, if I'm smoothing over this, when I'm trialling it, if I'm going to leave a line in the wall, it's, it's usually the heel that leaves the line, yeah. Right, so that's the back end of the trail, yeah, right? Six. So, so the, this is the toe, the top end. Yeah. That's the toe, and that's the heel, right? That's it. So yeah. you're saying it's the back end. When, when I come heel. down here. Yeah, okay. See how the heel leaves a line? Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. that's caused a little bit of crud okay. there, but right. it's the heel that will always leave the line. So that's why you're working left to right. Yeah. So you're always, the heel is always on the bit you've not touched. So okay. If understand. you went that way, you know. All right, okay. You don't have. All those lines all the way down your wall. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Now look, <laughs> I'm not trying to catch you out here, mate, but Go on. why, when you're rendering and you're right-handed, you start from the right-hand side and go left? That doesn't make any sense. Why would render be any different to plaster? Because those plasters are crazy. <laughs> That's the quick answer. Yeah. Right, so, when you're, when you're rendering, the material doesn't stick as well to the wall as what finishing plaster does. Yeah. So as you push plaster up the wall, if I'm if I'm coming on with sand and cement here now, yeah. I push it up the wall here. Yeah. If I was going this way, every time I curl off, two things happening. I'm losing the thickness because I'm feathering into nothing, yeah. and plaster will curl and drop off. Whereas if I'm going this way, I'm tying the last stroke in. So this stroke, every time I tie it in, okay, I tie it in, yeah. and then I'm not losing it, the, the, the plaster's not dropping off, mm. and I'm keeping the thickness of the plaster. So and we're not worried about the heel of the trail leaving marks on the render because mm. we're going to rule through anyway. Yeah, because it's only, it's only slight with render. You know, yeah. render's uh, it's a lot thicker of a product, yeah. so it yeah. doesn't and have to be And you are ruling neat. off. Yeah. You, you'll always rule off, won't you? Yeah. Because I've seen renderers, plasterers rendering who don't rule off, and then <laughs> you see the sunshine on it. Whoa. Oh, yeah, it's all dishy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They think yeah. they can do it all the trail, but you, it's very hard. No, to, to get things nice, you want to be ruling off, really. Yeah, yeah. Is this a tapered board, by the way? Yeah. So this would normally be for dry lining. So does <sighs> that, that doesn't cause us a problem. No, to be honest with you. It's better. To be honest with you, fellas will... Um, tapered and square-edged, fellas will use just evil in the plastering. No mm -hmm. one really makes that much of a, a fuss about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I'm, I'm usually used to just using whatever they turn up and whatever they've got there, you know? Yeah. Okay, mate, I'll get cracking. Straight away, I'm finding this a bit sloppy. I'm going all over the floor with it, mate. It's all right, Roger, don't worry. No, 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 but it just, to me, this would be too wet. Shall we, um, do you want us to thicken it up a little bit? No, 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 it's fine. I'm just saying, I'm just making an excuse for the fact that I've gone on the bloody floor. <laughs> I'm going to have to get something to clean that up because I normally have it a little bit. A little bit firmer. This is what he gets when he forgets screws. He has to put his finger in the blaster. <laughs> Go on, yeah? Okay, all right, so let's go. Yeah. Only when they're live. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I don't like about hitting live cables is that I think it takes out the edge of your track. <laughs> right, now, now we're here, Roger, just before you go further. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure. If I put some stuff just on there. Yeah. Right. In fact, I'll do it to the end so I can have a bit as well. Okay. Right. Just take your track on there. And literally push the stuff up. Ah, that's okay. it. Got it. Yeah. Just push it up like that and, yeah. and roll the trowel off. And then down like that. But not quite up to about there. Yeah, and then, yeah, now take a little bit of your trowel like that. Take a little bit off there and just go up to the seam line. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, like that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Because we're doing, working on two wet walls together. Yeah. That would be. For the corners, I've been looking at the corner trail for that. But... Well, <laughs> yeah, most fellas would. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you today, Roger, a way of not using a corner trail. Yeah. I haven't got nothing against corner trails, and I've used them myself. Yeah. But I discovered years ago a way of not using them. And I just, I, just, I mean, some guys are going to say, oh no, they are faster to use, but I don't see the benefit in them if you don't need them. Yeah, yeah. So I find just going to the angle neat, and I'll show you a little trick later on how to cut the corner nice and square with your trowel yeah. without an angle tool. Because the thing um, is with an angle corner trowel, they can go in and out a bit, can't they? Yeah, they and then follow the line a bit. If you've got a smart apprentice, he'll stand on it and knock it out of shape for you. Anyway. <laughs> so then you, you, it's good to know how to get around that. We're, want, you know. we're not talking about Leighton here, are no, we? No, no, Leighton's Light, not guilty of that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Although, Leighton, you are guilty of not putting a scrim on this joint here, so... That'd be me. Oh, I'm sure side. Yeah, that'd be me, mate. <laughs> yeah. Get I one there for us quick time, son. I scrimmed up that wall. Sorry. <laughs> Have you got one, mate? I got mine, mate. No rush. Any time in the next three seconds, all done. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm trying to go in this angle here without filling this little box up with his speaker wires here. <laughs> Nice, okay. So, let's put the bottoms in. Okay, Rog, you ready for the bottoms? Yeah, yeah. I think so. It's going on a little bit 
unevenly. Yeah, As I right. say, it's wetter than I, I would normally go, but yeah, go on. So what are you going to say? I've got a plan for us when we're, before we second coat anyway, so we'll give it a nice little smooth over. Yeah. And then we'll second coat it. Now, okay. um, there are, there are opposing ways of putting bottoms in. So my preferred way of doing it is to save on bending because you have to dip twice, you see. So my preferred way is to push it down once oh, okay. and then come up and then push it down once. That's my preferred way of putting the plaster in because yeah. I'm only having to, for each stroke of plaster, I'm only having to dip down once. Now, if I mean, it doesn't matter for a little job like this, but if you did this, you know, times yeah. 100 metres yeah, sure. every single day for, you know, a year, it's a lot less squatting to do. Yeah. But what most plasters will do, which will probably be easier for today anyway, I'll just show you the, the way that... Most guys will come along, start at the bottom here, up, down oh, nice. and then back up again yeah. so you're doing two dips for yeah. every stroke of plaster yeah, yeah. now the only thing with doing it my way is it's very easy to push a big, big ball of plaster right down the wall and it just all drop off at the bottom on the floor so yeah. it's it, i mean it's it's good if you can practice that technique because if you get good at it over time it'll save you back a lot you know but to be fair, mate, I'm not being rude here, but if you did do it the other way, you might not have all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I cry, I cry myself to sleep most that? nights. <laughs> do you know, my missus said to me, if you get any fatter, I'm going to start ironing your T-shirt on a walk. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I've got to remember you're a boxer as well. I mustn't be too cheeky, <laughs> yeah, no, will you? Not anymore, Rog. That was a lo long time ago for me, that. Can you imagine how rude you'd be if you hadn't bought it again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who was it I said that about? Oh, yeah, that, that um, Ian, wasn't it? I said, the thing I really like about you, Ian, James is mate, you know, Ian the carpenter, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing I really like about you, Ian, is it doesn't matter how many tools I give you, you still don't feel the need to be nice to me. <laughs> and he said, that's because you haven't given me enough tools yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, when we're bringing that line down there, Rog, yours might be a little bit more tricky because you've got a socket to work around. Yeah. But basically, to keep the angle neat, put your plaster in. Yeah. And then from that plaster, we do the same principle as what we were doing on the, on the ceiling. Yeah, make it work. Just take a little bit. There, go in neat, take a little bit. Put it out. So, you see how I'm doing that? I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. leaving a little bit, bit of plaster, yeah. I'm taking a bit from there, and then going in neat into the yeah, angle. Yeah. And it just stops plaster going all over that there, you know? Did you learn all this, or did your dad teach you, or what? Uh, or did you just pick it up on your own? Well, that there's stuff. so much that someone can teach you, and then the rest of it's sort of down to you then. But. I'll be honest, I pick little bits up from all over the place, you know, over the years yeah. I've watched and worked with different plasters and you go, do you know what, I like that, I like that, I'll do that. And what's yeah. interesting is, now because I put stuff on YouTube, fellas always come in the comments and go, oh what about this and oh what about that, I yeah. think, you know what, there's literally 30 ways to do everything with plastering, there's so many different ways of doing the same job. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just finding a way that you're quite happy with that gets you the, the best results, you know? Yeah. I always try and work the most efficient way, really. Yeah, you, I know. Because I'm lazy. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm lazy. That's, that's, that's the only reason the wheel got invented, isn't it? Because somebody was fed up with dragging things along the ground and going, do you know what? It's got to be an easier way. So I'm, I'm all for that. I think, you know, let's be lazy. Four scoops. Four scoops of breakfast every day. <laughs> oh, a little bit of crap in there.
Right, let me try this then. On the wall. Down. Up. Kind of. It's the roll of the trowel, that's the uh, that's the key to it. Yeah. You've got to have quite a bit on your trowel rod. Yeah, I'm coming there. Oh yeah, okay, I've got it. I'll get it there, I'll get there. It's a bit on the ground, but... You've got to have about that much on your trowel. Yeah, okay. So that when you come to there, yeah, you can that. roll that trowel on the material and then slowly push it down. Got it. Yeah, we want the excess, don't we, basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now while we're at it then, mate, look, let me just get some on the board. Or the hawk, as I call it. When I'm, when I'm loading my trowel, yeah. what I tend to do quite a lot is I don't, I don't get enough across the width of the trowel. Is it because I need to do that with the hawk? You well, can do, or just take the gear like that. Ah, okay. So you, you, your yeah. trowel will pretty much stay still anyway. Yeah. Just if you keep your trowel in one position, it's the hawk that moves. Okay. So, see, a lot of guys will try and do that off the, off the get-go, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. They'll try and do the trowel, but it's, it's literally the hawk that does the... It defies gravity. <laughs> right, I'll try this one. It's funny that little bit of um, taper edge ball because it is. It needs another lot through the middle. What's that for? Try it. Try it. R rather than oh. this. Is that a brand spanker? No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, very nice. Oh yeah, how funny. Mud, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What, just because it's narrow, you mean? It doesn't matter, you know, your wrist is more trouble because of how sharp it is. Yeah, it's just that it allows you to roll it better, actually, because it's slightly narrow. I'm not going to get too used to it, I'll tell you why, because I don't want to change all my trails now. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do quite a lot of stuff with Rollins and they used to send me trails, you know. Mm. So I've got a few nice Marshall tines. This is the Marshall Yeah. Curve it's beautiful. There's no doubt it's nice. What the heck is that? <laughs> Someone stapled the beads on. I just left a staple sticking out. I'm trying to be a proper plasterer here and fill up the socket boxes as I go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not, none of that, Rog. None of that. <laughs> I always look after the electricians. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't believe in <laughs> sabotaging people's work. <laughs> The elect chickens. <laughs> How much more have you got left to go on, Rog? Half a handboard worth. Right, we'll have to mix up again now. Yeah, I'm going to leave this here for you, Rog, so you've got enough to get this on, okay? And just put that there a second so you can finish off and I'll just get as far as I can with this and mix up again. Right, Leighton's gone to go and get some more plastic, some... Blah, 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 start that again. Leighton's gone to go and get some more water because we need to do, mix some more plaster. I've still got a little section of wall that needs doing. So, usually we'd give this time now to pick up. Before we put the second coat on, we sort of want this where it's... See how it's still sticking to my fingers now? That's too wet to second coat. Really, you want that to be able to leave an imprint in it, but not stick to your fingers. 
If you can't leave an imprint, then you've left it too long. You need to get on it a bit sooner than that. You need to hurry up a little bit. But Leighton's what, gone to go and get some do? water. What hey? would you do if you did leave it a bit too long? Would you just unibond it and then go? No, if, 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 if it's gone a little bit too... If it's, if it's starting to really firm up, yeah. then you just need to put a little rocket up your bum and go a lot quicker. That's basically the best okay. way of putting it. Yeah. But it's hard for me sometimes to try and instill this urgency into the apprentices. Because yeah. when I was taught, I'd have fellows screaming at me, water, quick, go, yeah. run, get some water, yeah. you know. Yeah. Whereas when I'm working someone's home, I don't want to be screaming <laughs> shit. Because no. that, that sort of makes the customers panic a bit, like they're losing yeah. control yeah. of what they're doing. So, yeah. so I sort of like keep effort nice and calm and chilled out. But at the same time, I'm like, let him get some water. And he's like, <laughs> I'm like, let him. Get some water! <laughs> you know? Take a bit of gear, yeah. There go. Yeah, I've got a little midget trail in there. Or what, what was the lad to call it now? Something else. Yeah. Small, person. small person's trail now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to watch out because you yeah, never know oh, who's going to come out the box next and be offended, bloody, do you? Bloody <laughs> so if, if you had big lines and what have you, I mean, the, the, the textbook way, would be to put your first coat on, flatten it, yeah. and then put your second coat on. Yeah. When I plaster over an Artex, that's what I'll do. I'll put the first coat on on an Artex ceiling. I'll flatten it and leave it go right off and then second coat it. Yeah. You've put that on fairly neat, Roger. Okay. Um, and just slides it. Apart from the stuff that yeah, went on the floor. <laughs> so, so we'll just second coat this. As soon as Leighton comes back, we'll mix up again. I'll finish off my bit of wall down there. Yeah, so it's still it's sticking to your yeah, finger yeah, a little right. bit. Yeah, it's all yeah. okay. Now these yeah. boards have been up a little while, so they are drawing a bit of moisture. Yeah. Um, plaster boards that have been hung for you know a couple of months become quite high suction. Yeah. Whereas like oh, you know yeah. yeah if you oh. if you put plaster boards on fresh off a pack of you wow. know from the builder's yard they're warm still. Yeah, yeah. they're great you know. But if they've been hung, say you've done a loft conversion and you've boarded it and then yeah, come back yeah. three months later to yeah, skim it. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> The suction off them, you know, you've got to yeah. see all the boards again yeah, before you can yeah. start. We used to back in the days nail it all on, you yeah, know, before we screwed, yeah, yeah, board, and then you'd be poppers everywhere, wouldn't you? All yeah. over the this was my old fella's challenge. This one before I was allowed to say I was out my apprenticeship, one of the things my dad made me do was you have to put an eight before. I mean, don't don't try and do this, I'm not advising this, but we all thought you have to put an eight before sheet of board on the ceiling and nail it up by yourself with no one helping you. Oh, yeah. So, you've got to. So or, or you, dead men you're or trying what? to hold it like this. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just oh. got to hold it on your head like that with one hand and your nails oh. all ready to go in your mouth and think, stick a nail in, you know. It's just so hard. <laughs> it's not so fun. hard on the body, isn't it? Once you get used to it, you can get into a nice little rhythm of doing it, but the first time you try it, you know, you snap what, a few boards. What are you talking about without a dead man or anything? Yeah, just literally just hold it up with your head and your hands, you know, and you get it in place and you need to have a nail in your hand ready and you hammer in your other hand and then ding, 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 tack it and then... Ding, 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 tack it, and then away you go. It's not fun. That's torture. Right. Time for the second coat. I've just mixed this up now. Now, it's important now. We always want to keep the back edge of our trowel clean. It's mainly that back of that blade there. And we always keep that washed off. Now, I know I've got a bit of build up on my trowel, but what I mean is wet plaster on the back of here. When you're going across the wall, if there's any sort of wet plaster on that, it'll smear and drag across the wall, you know. And it's, there's more, when you go into the angles, if all this is all cankered up with wet plaster, it'll end up all over the ceiling. So, you know, I always want to try and keep your tools nice and clean as we're working. And then, the good thing is, Rog, it's just a replay of what we've already done. Just the same thing over again. I've got a feeling that there's a point in this process where I need to go and get my glasses on. <laughs> because I've done some plaster in the front, like, that's all right. And then I've gone and got my glass and oh, it's not quite as good as I thought it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what I'll... usually happens is the customer comes with a magnifying glass to oh, check it anyway. Yeah. So. I'm going to go and get my glasses, mate, because I've, I've got a feeling that I'm going to be wasting my time here just putting it on. All right, Rob. 
I'll get the top of this on, we'll have a bit more time with you then as well. Yeah, yeah. So Dylan, Roger's cameraman, has just informed me that Roger's microphone's still on and he can still hear Roger even though he's gone. Let me know if he... Let me, if he mutters anything under his breath about me whilst he's gone, like... Yeah. Yeah, send all that over in the edit. <laughs> yeah. So that was better than you thought it would be. That, that's, that's setting you up now, isn't it? <laughs> he's done, he's done uh, to be fair, look, look at that for the first count. He's done a fairly nice job of that. I mean, I know he's been over it with his, uh, with his special squeegee tool. I mean, fair dues. I mean, what you've got to remember is, ultimately, Roger doesn't want to become a plasterer. He's not going to go out into the world of plastering. If he's going to do a bathroom and plaster at one wall, then that is going to be ideal, you know. Here right, we are. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a better looking than you thought, Roger. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about the plastic trail, Kurt? So, <laughs> plastic trowels, when they first come out, I mean, I used plastic before it was even a thing, before there was even plastic trowels invented. We were using, um, we were using the fire exit signs on building sites <laughs> because it's great for polishing walls with. It does get you a lovely polish. And I think on work like this, it's fine because, you know, everything's quite flat to begin with. But here's my opinion for what it's worth. Plastic's fairly flexible, isn't it? So I think as a beginner, if somebody's learning to plaster, I'd rather them learn with a steel trowel first, learn the proper way first, and then once they can leave a nice job, then try all the little things that make thing, life easier later. Yeah. But you get a lot of guys learning, and they're learning with plastic trials, and they don't know how to sort of get a nice job without them, and then they're going to struggle if they haven't got them. Yeah. And the, the thing with it is, the plastic's flexible. So if you've got a big lump in your wall, a bit of plaster went firm, and there was a big belly in it somewhere, and you go over them, plastic trowel it's gonna follow it yeah it'll just bend to the shape of it and you won't know it's, it's, it's very similar to the flexi trials you know yeah yeah which you hate well i mean I, I i used them when they first come out i had all i had the nella flex i had the black edition you know i had the refiner <laughs> flex i tried them all yeah. Yeah. but I, I just sort of fell out of love with them because i've seen that they do do a nice job and there's fellas on site that will defend them and say how fantastic they are and great on building sites where you, you, you're just going over nice flat walls. They are, you know, oh, they are okay to use. But, I don't know, when you're doing a lot of private work and you're going over old walls and you're trying to straighten things out, they don't help you all that much, you know? Yeah. So, a lot of guys like use them for the, the last pass. You know, they say just using it for the polish at the end. That's what I do. Yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. I just, um, I like the feel of it, I just think, and I like, I'll tell you the other thing I like about that needle flex is the, the cork handle. Yeah. yeah. It's a lovely thing. Yeah. I'm actually friends with the guy that introduced them to the UK, Ryan Hill. Ah, oh, right. Plasterer's one-stop shop. I know him, yeah. 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 He was the guy that started it all off, you know. So. That's right, you're right, actually. He's who we blame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, he's a great fellow, Ryan. Yeah, I remember that well enough because that's where I got mine from, I think. That one stop shop. I mean, 
People always get me wrong on this and, and think that I'm dead set against them. And I'm not. Someone that's been plastering for, you know, 10 years, fine, because they can do a lovely job without them. But what I don't like is young lads coming up, learning the trade, and they've got 20 different trials in the bag, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you just give them one trial and said they do a nice job, they wouldn't know where to start, you know. They, they have to have this trial for this part, this trial for that bit, you know, a speed skin for this. And you're like, look, just have a trial on a hawk, or a handboard, as I like to call it, and do a nice job, you know. And then, when you're good, you can, you can start getting all the other little bits of kit to make your life easier. Is it still wet, Roger? The bottom bit is. Yeah, good, good. Just use that to spread around, make, make it easy on your, on your arm to wear. Um, you sort of want it wet to get, get it smoothed over. Like, you know, you just try to flatten it in and get any lines out of it, really. Well, he was going fine, but for some reason he's changed direction. And I didn't see him do this at the time. I've only seen it since watching the video back, but there was no reason to change direction there. He should have just kept going, Roger. <laughs> you rascal, you. I don't really want to wear these nice Snickers trousers for a plastering job. They are my best trousers. But I'm really glad I did because they got these encapsulated knee pads. They're in there all the time, and it's great just to be able to do that. Just drop down to do these lower parts, because I probably wouldn't have bothered putting the knee pads in the trousers to do a plastering job, but I know Kurt doesn't go down on his knees. He just squats down and does it, but it's quite nice just to be able to do it comfortably like that. Maybe Kurt would like a pair of Snickers trousers to go in knee pads. He might, but he might not. Because he doesn't get on his knees like me. Well, that maybe like he the said... The box. Yeah, yeah. He there's, said... There's, there's two types of workmen, isn't there? There's guys that wear these type of work pants, and then there's the, the guys that wear tracky bottoms. Tracky. Plasters <laughs> wear tracky now, bottoms. I get in trouble for wearing these. My old fella... Always in whites. Plasters oh, always have really? to wear the whites, you know. Was he? White pants or bib and brace. And if I was ever caught, you know, kneeling down. Sorry, mate. Get off your knees. Get off your knees, you know. And there was a big thing about, you know, you've got to save your knees. You're not allowed to kneel down. You have to squat down and that's it, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> the bigger your belly gets, though, the harder it is to squat down. <laughs> right. right, just before we polish now, just so gonna nip round quickly, and clean all these boxes out for the electricians. It's easier to get this plaster out now whilst it's wet than leaving it to set. And uh, these guys appreciate it when you do that for them. And as well, we've been quite fortunate. I don't really build much up around the bottom here, but if there was a big lump of plaster around here, you know, we just go along and clean it off, ready for the, the joiner with his skirting board to come in and do his bit. That's it, I think it's all basically it. So we'll sort that angle out now, give that a nice little brush in to finish that off. Give it a polish and that'll be us. Quick clean up and we're done, Roger. I'm fattening him up. <laughs> No mystery now, I know that's done. It's just work for customers who feed you. <laughs> Get in and then just a polish and we're done. <sighs> Maybe just edit that bit out where I've just nicked Roger's wall. <laughs> Don't include that bit. <laughs> I'm nicking time. That 
that's it. Little brush. Finished. Back of that trail. Can you can you see the shine on that for the camera can you are? I can I can see it, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I can see it. See, I've never done this, this last bit. The, the thing I've always finished up with is a wet trowel. Yeah. So it's quite interesting for me to see this final stage that's been missing. Oh, Kurt, there's only one bit I'm a bit concerned about now. You can't quite see it, but there's some chat the mark so can you sit there, there oh, yeah. here look yeah i think to be fair they've yeah. happened sort of in the polish you can't feel them but even still we'll just give it a nice little trial the opposite so that's just where i ran out of water basically and i heard it go when you're going up if you hear that yeah. noise yeah your trial will chatter going that way so to get rid of them Rather than trying to smooth it the same way and your trowel will go in and out of them, just come across it the opposite way. Uh, oh, nice. And then, they're gone. Yeah, okay. Okay, go on. Just come and look at this. Come, come here with your camera. Yeah. This is Roger's wall. Just shine down on that now. Oh, it's like glass. He's got it mitt. He's got it. <laughs> I'm out of a job. He's got your secret sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when we come down for the plumbing, mate, and I see your plumbing, yeah, I'll be out of the job. Okay, so if you enjoyed meeting Roger, feel free to head over to his channel, Skill Builder, where they cover uh, foundations, drains, brickwork, um, joinery. Uh, what don't you actually do, Roger? Plaster. Well, no, we do cover plastering. <laughs> and the other thing, politics. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of that sneaks in every so often. Literally, you can get the plaster with me and everything else get from Roger. <laughs> right, I genuinely hope that you enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed doing the collaboration. It was great work with another YouTube personality. So I've also learned different camera tricks from Dylan, editing skills. I've learned plumbing from Roger. It's been fantastic. We spent the evening together the, the, the night before. We went for a meal in a pub. It was just a great time meeting Roger. What a great fellow he is, and Dylan as well. But 71 years of age, and he's as fit as a fiddle. Well, you've seen him, he jumped on the back of me. <laughs> the guy's nuts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Now, we filmed hours and hours and hours of footage, but we could only make videos so long. So if you'd like to see some bonus footage, head over to Skill Builder on their channel. It's the same job, but a lot of different footage so you can get more of the same stuff. Really hope you've enjoyed it. If you like the merchandise, feel free to click on the link below. There's t-shirts, there's beanies, there's hoodies, there's all sorts of stuff in there now. We keep adding more and more to it, so I hope you enjoy that. And if you'd like help with growing your business, bringing in more work, then also click on the link in the description. Guys, it's been a pleasure. See you on the next one.